So now we're going to put the footprint for the PCB on the schematic as well. So what you like to do is you click on it, double click, you get to the property page. Here you can see footprint. So footprint, push the button and they're all open here. So we are looking for a USB connector. Oh, strange. USB. I normally use this micro B Molex. There's the part number if you want to buy it. Okay, so we can also put a data sheet. So let's do that. Um, so this is actually the, the USB. See the number there? That's how it looks. So we take this copy put it there now we'll always have this component in our future design so that if you want to see something that will be perfect got that now we have to do capacitors footprint so this is where the different footprints uh, come from so if you go on top here you've got capacitors SMD and through all so the difference is SMD is sold it onto the PCB, there's no holes. So the components you put on a breadboard are called through holes and uh, that's TH2, but SMDs are just flat. So they're quite nice and small. So you can see 805, 1206. That is just the size. The bigger the number, the bigger the resistor. Or you can do through holes. That seems empty. There will be holes like that. This is what most people are used to. It's called actual, axial, axial, or radial. Okay, but we are going to use SMD. We're going to make it big. So I agree with uh, Ranish. Let's make it big so we can solve it easy. So I'm going to go even bigger than 08 to 5. I'll go 12 or 6. I'll make that so you can see hand solder and just normal one. So the hand solder, they just make the pads a bit bigger so you can solve it easily. So let's do that. I'm going to copy this because I've got more resistors in my project. Uh, this one. I'm going to paste it. You guys will see how everything gets together later. You got uh, LED. Double click. Or you can click on it, push E. Some more. E is also for properties. So you can see the 1206, 603 are quite common um, names for footprints. Resistor, footprint. You can see resistors, capacitors actually look quite similar to each other, footprint wise. And then we need a battery connector. So let's take a real life battery because we're going to have to plug it in. Um, so I'm going to use this as an example. Um, so this got a JST connector so we're gonna make a, try to find a female connector that will fit that those are pretty small I think it's 1.25 so now we chose the 1.25 now every single component has a footprint associated to it so that's important so I'm gonna tell my program now of my keycap that please take my schematic here and go put it on my PCB to do this I have to go tools update update PCB from schematic so we'll take update my PCB from my schematic. So I push that. Now you'll see. I always just say reassociate. Um, but it will tell you what it's going to do. It's going to add, 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 add. Um, won't give me any errors or warnings. There we go. And now it's on my board. So this is the circuit we need to charge the battery. So now for the PCB, we need to create a board outline. So we need a, the dimension of the PCB itself. So this can be quite small. So let's see how small we can make it. To do that, you have to go to edge cutouts on the right here. Edge cutout is your layer that controls the board. And then we're going to draw a line, add graphics line. I keep in control to keep it straight. If you don't keep in control, it can go anywhere. So keeping control just to go straight. 
And now I want to make one line, and then I'm going to give a dimension uh, zero. I want to make it try make it small, um, twenty. No, that's way too small. Let's see. So now we're going to have to try and get these components. So if I push Alt three, I can check my three D view. And now I'm going to try to get all those components on here. So I've got my USB. You can see there it says PCPH. That is for you to try to tell you that please line that line up with the edge of the PCB. So you always want your micro USB to be off the edge of it. So that's my input. So again, just like the schematic, we try to make the piece before the same, right? So we have a process. So I've got my input, processing, output. So I've got my input, my processing will be in the middle, and I'm my output. Um, so I hope you guys are still with me. So input, output. Another important thing is if we got our, let's do this. You can see when I click on something here, it pops up here so to show that it is um, linked so that's a good indication to see if your components are linked properly <coughs> so if i click on this capacitor it will tell me where it is yes so let's do our processing so we've got the led and you can see the names of the signals we give v bat v bus it's already part of our names here you can see on the IC which is great so I've got my resistor my LED goes to my resistor so you see these white lines these white lines are called rest rat nests and they just show you where the where the wires are connected. So you can see R1 goes to my LED, which it does. So there it goes to pin one, and it goes to the the chip status. Uh, yeah. So so you can see there's another line on top that goes to my chip here. You can see it doesn't have any name, it doesn't have a status name. So the nets only get names when you give it names like ground or power, then they get names. Or I can push L for label and give it a name. So I'm going to give this name stat. Now it will have a name. So if I go back, tools, update, reassociate. Now stat will appear there. Just for interest sake, um, R2 needs to be, there's my R2, that's going to program and stat. Uh, click on it, M to move. So you can see it goes to ground, which is pin 2 and it goes to pin 5, so it's perfect and then I've got my decoupling capacitors so decoupling capacitors you want to be as close as possible to my IC so now when we look at it it kind of looks like we can do something with it but so my USB does not have a 3D footprint so we will give it a 3D footprint. So when we go to my component, we saved our data sheet. So we can just push a button and we can get there straight away, which is amazing. Uh, 3D view and download, start generation. Um, uh, uh, Anad, I'll answer you now. It's a good question. Are you talking about the decoupling capacitors or why do I place everything so close? so yeah the other ones are not that important so to be honest you are you can put this led and resistor quite far from each other um, far from chip doesn't really matter it's nicer to have it close because of routing and 
uh, when you have more components on the board you would like your tracks to be shorter because you've got a lot of routing to do so if you have components far from each other and you start routing you're wasting space that you can route other components in so it's space management and then with the decoupling capacitors that just always needs to be closer um, because the closer it is the shorter the tracks um, shorter the impedance issues can be so when you have a track it is copper and it can if, you, if it's very long um, it can have its own impedance as well own resistance so you don't want that neither so you want your decoupling capacitors always as close as possible close possible supply if that makes sense help with losses and all that stuff because what the decoupling capacitor is actually is if I have a 3.3 volts coming in my my uh, capacitor actually just keeps a small charge like a small battery so when I lose that 3.3 volts or it becomes 3.1 volts my capacitor makes sure that it's 3.3 volts for a certain amount of time okay the bigger capacitor the bigger it is so that's the idea so it's just so if I've got a 3.3 volts and it fluctuates 3.1 3.4 3.5 I can have a constant 3.3 volts so I just want to make sure so this yellow ugh, yellow parts light blue I don't know what you want to call it green is the silk on this on the PCB so if I push all three that is my designators so when I sold it I can see D1 R1 so when you sold it at home you'll look at your schematic you will be like you'll be like R1 is 470 so I put R1 here I look at my PCB R1 I put 470 ohm there but I was busy with this yes 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 so I downloaded the CAD I think save file I just double click on it uh, 3D settings open folder and then I look where I saved it so I just saved it in downloads now good morning magpie so now you can see uh, it's not sitting how it is sit in real life so you can click on it and then move up uh, rotate it so let's just add some um, silk on top to say what things are so we go F as your front silk it's normally your top silk but in KiCad is your front silk uh, take a text, we're going to type something here, we're going to say um, battery yeah, let's just say bat um, yeah, so plus and minus, we can do that as well <laughs> hey Mac, bye so we spoke about the ratness, they tell you where to go. So now we can just go top and then we're gonna root track. So let's start. So once I click on it, you'll see it'll tell me where to go, it'll highlight. So all these can be connected. I should actually ground it. I'll ground it later. That's quite cool. This it looks like a sad face. But it's just the name. <laughs> it's a T cut off, now it looks sad. Anyway, so like you can see, um, I always do my ground and fault use the last. Sometimes you'll start rooting and while you root, you'll see better opportunities. So just go with the flow, just go with the flow. So I like to throw copper pores on my boards. So I normally make the top layer on my voltage and my bottom layer my ground. So to do that, I just click this button, it's called Add Fold Zones, and I just fill it. So that means this whole layer, uh, let's make it VBUS. I will see that we've got a copper pore of VBUS. Um, so MacBus says he always prefers a thin slice of solder mask between pads whenever possible, especially on tight pads. Mm, you're talking about here yeah, in between yeah and I know what you mean um, just how to explain this so solder mask is 
what you see here, um, the green part. So this whole board is, you get different layers, you get the copper inside and then you get a solar mask on top. So the solar mask co covering the copper. So what uh, Magpie is trying to say is that he rather um, have a bigger opening here, so less solar mask, right? Is that what you're trying to say? Or do you want it smaller? Because there's a lot of designers that actually try to keep it open. Because the manufacturer, yeah, it's not something I really wanted to go into too much detail today, but you pour it up. <laughs> so solder mask openings is where all the pads are. So pads are soldered. Uh, it's maybe easy if I go here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's mask. So if I click on the right here, you see F mask, that's top mask. So the pink is where the board is open and the cop is exposed. <laughs> now we'll get there. I just want to take it um, systematic because the same thing happened last time. We started like this and then we ended up making a drone. So, <laughs> so let's just keep it simple. We'll definitely talk about it. It's very good points. Because there's a lot about PC design that, yeah. But we need to take it step by step. So now we've got a, a ground plane at the bottom of our board. So now we can actually take a via. So via is just like a, I like to call it a magic portal. It will just take my signal from the top layer to the bottom layer. So you can see I've got ground here. If I take ground and I just connect these two 100 moles. And I put a wire and I go boom, somewhere there. Now it's connected to the bottom of the board with my crown. So we kind of have most of it connected, or everything connected. You can see here, um, Magpie automatically does it. There's a setting in KiCad. I'm not exactly sure where. Maybe my copper board itself. Yeah, clearance, there we go. So it automatically makes a clearance. Which is cool. So distance between things are called clearances. So now to check that we actually got everything connected. So we had our schematic. Like I said, this is very important schematic because your PCB will just check, okay, what did I connect here? And do I match what you have here? So if your mistake is here, you will take it across without knowing. So this is very important. So once we have our PCB, we say tools, inspect, design, rule check. So this will make sure that all my things are connected, there's no overlapping of components, things like that. There's a lot of rules you can alter, but I'm not going to do that now. Um, I'll talk about track width and stuff on a later day. So we say run DRC. I uh, just want to reform my copper pores. There's no unconnected items, and there's no problems. So this board is according to schematic. But like I said, if your schematic is incorrect, then it's not to say your PCB will correct, but the, this PCB is identical to the schematic, which is what we want. So there we go. So you're going to plug in your battery, you're going to plug in your USB, and this will charge.